About a month ago, Google Sheets added drop-down tips to their platform, and let me tell you, it is a game changer. No need to click around with data, data validation anymore, but you still can. But we can now do this all with an at command. Now this feature has already been available in Google Docs for a while, but now it's finally made its way over to Google Sheets. So let's see it in action. So let's say that we have a list for our friends and we want to know what their first and second choices of starter Pokemon there are. So over here in first choice, let's just type in at dropdowns and we can see there it is. We can press tab to get that activated. And let's say that our first choice is Bulbasaur. Our second option might be a Charmander and our third one might be Squirtle. So now when we select this from list, we've got Bulbasaur, Charmander and Squirtle. You can do that by clicking on the chip and then selecting our Pokemon. Another way to select it is once you're on the cell, you can press enter and then you can use your keyboard to uh, go up and down and then press enter on your choice. Let's just expand that out so we can get the full name there. Another cool thing we can do with these chips is color them. So we can see here in the sidebar, we have Bulbasaur. Let's make Bulbasaur green. Let's make Charmander red and let's go with blue for Squirtle. And we can see Charmander's turned red and our options are also colored. So let's say Squirtle, I'm actually going to go with Bulbasaur because Bulbasaur is by far the greatest uh, starter Pokemon. And then we might want to do the second choice as well. So we could do at drop down and then do tab and all that. But instead, I'm just going to go back to C2 and then copy and paste it. That gives us the same options. Of course, we want to be much more open for our friends that we're going to put in here. So let's say this is mine. So let's say that we have a whole bunch of friends and we want to... Uh, give each of them choices. So again, in B3, I'm going to go with at drop down and we can press tab to open that up and it says apply to range. So we can actually apply drop downs to a whole range of data. Let's go from sheet one B3 to down to C, I don't know, 20. I don't have that many friends, but we'll go with it anyway. Then that gives us a drop down in all of these. I'm just going to click off it and you can see these drop downs appear automatically. And these are the same drop downs for each one. So again, if we do uh, Bulbasaur here and change that to green, just as a demonstration, if we click any one of these, Bulbasaur is now green and option two is still gray. Now, of course, again, we want to be open. We don't want to just have the Gen 1 Pokemons. What starter do you want from any Pokemon at all? So under criteria here, we're actually going to change this to drop down from a range. What range do we want? Well, if we click uh, this data range button here, this will allow us to select a whole range of things. And I have here in this poker data sheet, I have every Pokemon from Bulbasaur all the way down to Volcanion. So that's Pokedata B2 to B801, click on OK. And we can see that all of the Pokemon, including the Megas, have been added to our list. Now I'm not going to go through and color each one, but if you wanted to, I guess you could. If we go back to our sheet one, we can see here that we have every single Pokemon all the way down to Volcanion, including the Megas, all in each of these lists. Now, if we go to data, data validation, we could change these. Uh, we could edit these and it says from B3 to C21. So that will add in another row there for us. Of course, if we don't want to, if we don't see the data validation uh, and we don't want to go to data, data validation, we can just go down to B22 and hold uh, control D to duplicate. And again, there it is. Everything that we need, control D to duplicate. Uh, so now each of our friends can go in and select their first and second choice Pokemons. Now, the other cool thing that chips do is it automatically gives us a searchable uh, drop down list. So if we want to pick, I don't know, Nidorino, we can actually start with an N and it gives us a whole bunch of searchable items starting with N. If we know it's Nido, then that gives us each of these. Now that we do have some weird formatting here, that's just the male and female versions, female at the top, male at the bottom, but you can see how easy it is to get these searchable 
uh, drop downs without actually doing any work. I'm going to do control shift and E to center that. Actually, I'll do that for the whole list. So selecting B and C, control shift and E, and that centers absolutely everything. Now, if we wanted to not show these chips, what we can do is go back up to data, data validation and find the correct one. I'm actually going to get rid of this first one. So we have B3 to C22. I'm going to edit that to B2 to C22. And uh, I don't actually want to see each of these chips here for whatever reason. So I'm going to go down, 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 past all of the options. That's a lot of options. And then go to advanced options. We have some options down here for the display style. We've got chip, arrow, and plain text. Now arrow just changes it to arrows. This is what it used to look like. We also have plain text. We used to be able to do this as well, but now we don't have the arrows. So let's say that we give this uh, spreadsheet to our friends and we want them to fill their details in and they don't see that there is a drop down list here, but this drop down list is still there. They can start typing and they can see that there is a list of things and they can uh, go from there to figure out what their first choice of Pokemon is. Of course, uh, if they try to put in something weird, uh, let's say that they try to put in uh, Polygon, they actually get an error because we have over here, reject the warning. You can change the rejection notice to a customized text. So let's say pick a Pokemon from the list. So now if they try that, it says, and say Polygon, it says there was a problem, pick a Pokemon from the list. They say what list? Well, if they slow down a little bit, they can see here the list of Pokemon. We want Porygon. There we go. Uh, of course, if you don't want them to, if you don't want the uh, idea rejected, you could instead do show a warning. So now if they try to do Polygon, it gives them this red box saying, hey, it must fall within this range. So now that we've covered the basics of dropdowns in Google Sheets, you can go ahead and make something a little bit more advanced. Of course, we don't have anything too advanced here, but we can create dropdowns just like we did before. Select from a range, which range do we want? We want to click that window button, click on our data set there. We can go back to our Pokedex and I'm just going to increase the size of this to make it a little bit prettier and then select our Pokemon. So if we go Bulbasaur, we get all of this information here. If we click on, is Mew in this list? I don't know. Let's go. Oh, we got Mewtwo. There we go. And we see Mewtwo is legendary. Apparently Lucario is not legendary. That's strange. He's a god Pokemon. Why isn't he legendary? I don't know. But that's it. That is the new drop downs in Google Sheets. They are a lot of fun. You can do a whole lot of work with them with this new sidebar. And if this information has been helpful to you, please let me know down in the comments below and hit that like button. But of course, if it has not been helpful, again, head down to that comment section down below and let me know why. What's going on? What do you need to see? I want to know so I can improve and help you out. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.